Hola, comadres. Welcome to the eighth episode of Comadriando. I'm your host, Marcy. And we have a spectacular guest today. We have Penny. And I will let her introduce herself. Who are you? Who am I? What a good question. Um, I'm Penny. I am 34 years old from Florida, New York. <laughs> um, I'm an IT analyst slash supposedly an entertainer at some point in my life. But yeah, that's it. That's who I is. Does that like, is that good? That's good for me, right? I think that's perfect. I guess. Um, can we talk about your show? Oh, the show that's never happening? You mean Labian Nights, y'all. Uh, <laughs> the show, it's, at this point, it's just a brand. And it's a brand. What is the brand? Sex. Just bringing some sex positivity into my life and also make it funny and entertaining. I think I'm a comedian. I'm starting to come to the realization that I am a comedian. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. All right, guys. So, uh, Comadres, I love Penny because I met her at the Mami Chula book club. We're both yes. part of the same social club, and we've basically been obsessed with each other ever since that day. Pretty much. Um, we have friends in common, and basically we nerd out on, like, all kinds of levels. And the topic today is not a serious topic. We were taking a break, and um, it's dating, horror stories. Uh, and the reason <laughs> why this topic is important is because Penny and I um, always get together and we regale each other with our nightmare dates and our good dates as well. And I feel like, um, you know, we need a break from the serious topics. There's been a lot of uh, things that we've been covering, which is uh, um, are very important. But also, I want to give you guys um, a look into my personal life and that I'm a human like yeah. you guys. <laughs> I'm not a human. I'm pretty sure I'm from not uh, from another planet, but that's a whole other topic. <laughs> all right. So let's get into it. Um, all right, Penny, what is your current relationship status? Oh, I'm gonna hide. Um, no, no, no. It's great. Uh, right now I am in a relationship. I was not for a while. Not for a while, actually. I'm in a relationship now. New relationship. Okay. Should I like going? go further into? Okay. Long story short, I was married for, or I was in a relationship for 13 years. That broke off. Then I was exploring myself, mostly sexually. And then I met somebody, and now we're together. It's so weird to be back in a relationship that seems to be serious. Uh, I know, I like it. Like, I get a weird talking about it sometimes. Like, oh my it's God, I'm in a relationship again. <laughs> Didn't you guys just recently move in together? Uh huh. Sort of. Yeah, we are. And how's that going? Cohabitat, cohabitating right now. Is that the right word? I'm a cohabiting. 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 Yeah, I know what I'm talking about. I live together. <laughs> we live together now. It's you know, it's not challenging because I've done it before. Um, it's just you know, it's just new because it's a new person and different dynamic. And I'm older. I'm an adult now. And yeah, but it's it's fun. It's, Except I'm taking it day by day. All right. So you saying you're an adult now. When you got into the relationship with your ex, you said 13 years. Mm -hmm. How old were you when you got with we that met, person? We met we was, when I was 17 because he's four years older than me. And we got together at 18. And then like within months of dating, we moved in together. So, you know, you remember when you were 18, you were just freaking clueless, even though you thought that you were like the smartest person in the world and the most adult human in the world. I was definitely not any of that. So, you know, like I'm still growing. I'm still figuring myself out and I'm still like, real, and like I'm now realizing I'm like, oh, I'm a little bit toxic. So maybe I should work on that. Like not being so toxic. So, you know, I, mm -hmm. I was, I was young. I was stupid. I was in love, of course. And the love was great, but you know, it just didn't yeah. work out. I mean, it happens. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. The audience knows I'm divorced. Uh, Divorcee, baby. <laughs> so, yeah, I got uh, me and Inside got together when I was around 22. Yeah, young still. Yeah, and um, we dated for a couple of years. Then we ended up getting married and having a baby. And then shortly after, like a year later, we ended up 
uh, separating and then consequently getting divorced two years later in New wow. York State, by the way. It's, it's like, like 18 months. The same thing. I was with my ex for eight years before we were, before I was like, oh, hey, let's just get married. And I guess I think I was just bored. I had passed like my mid-20s. So maybe I, I probably felt at that time pressure to be like, well, we're together this long. Why don't we like legalize it, right? Um, so then I was, then we got married and then what, three years into the marriage, we start, we separated three, four years into the marriage, we separated, we agreed to separate. And then, and then that was it. I feel like we just grew, we grew up to, we grew up to, we grew up and we kind of grew up not being the people we wanted, we, we hoped to be with, I guess. Like if I would have met him now, I probably would not be with him. I wouldn't like, he wouldn't be someone that I would want to date. I think I'm um, a friend for sure, but not like as a partner in life. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that's all right. Well, my dynamic was a little different. Um, so I, I met Aiden's dad when I was, we were kids and, um, he was friends with my cousins in Dominican Republic. He didn't even live here. So, yeah. I imported, I imported my ex husband, um <laughs> so yeah um the dynamic like long distance is great like in the moment you know mm -hmm. um i feel like it's not reality because at the end and i'm and i want to apologize to my listeners that have long distance relationships but from my experience it's not real because you know you're going on vacation for a short amount of time you're seeing this person it's not a real, um, it's yeah. not a real situation. Right. And when you you're on vacation, like, let's be real. Like sometimes vacation is just oh, getting away from reality. So like you're getting away from your reality to then be with your boyfriend at the time. Right. So it's like, mm -hmm. it's not even, is it, is it even real? Yeah. And then, you know, you're, you're there for a short amount of time. So like, you're not going to fight. You don't want to spend your time fighting. You have Facts. two weeks there. Exactly. You're not going to spend two days or three days fighting. So I feel like all of that was um, fabricated in a way. Like right. We did love each other. Of we course. just didn't have the same love language. So after we got here, we started running into issues. Um, besides the fact that he had to adjust uh, to the country, um, to newly being married. Oh, so like he was consequently like, having a baby. He yeah, wasn't he's not from here. Oh, see, that didn't know that. I thought he was Dominican American. No, he's Dominican Dominican. Oh, straight up. Like, like I'm okay. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, so uh it, it like it, everything got a little bit more complicated. Um yeah, that's how come sometimes I don't understand like how some people decide to have kids to fix the relationship because it actually just very Seems to be a very common thing, to be honest. Just like, I mean, I don't have any children, so I have no idea about, nor did I ever want to be like, we're going to have a kid to try to fix this. I just, my mindset was never there. My mindset to be a mom wasn't necessarily there. I'm, it's not that mm -hmm. I'm very maternal, but sometimes my mindset of being an actual mom is not there. Yeah. I want to be a grandma, though. Can't wait to be a grandma. <laughs> You'd be yeah. the best grandma, like the most yeah. flyest one. You'd be like, like crap. Come here, kids. Come here, kids. I want to feed you real quick. <laughs> Come here. I got a bowl full of fruits. I'm about to cut and give y'all. <laughs> don't listen to your moms. I got you. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. Uh, yeah um, it's a very common, like, you know, people fix, people assuming that because they're going to have a kid together, whether you're married or not married, or like, even when you're dating someone and then you get pregnant, you're probably thinking like, oh, this is going to probably be great for our relationship psych. Like, Mm -hmm. I mean, at least that's what it seems like from. Yeah. And, and then the good. expectation, like also like some people feel like getting married is going to fix certain situations in our relationship. Yeah. And it, and I it thought that, doesn't. I mean, I knew my relationship, my previous relationship wasn't like working um, because I, there was a moment when I had that seven that, you know, they call it seven year, year itch where we like, I even moved away with my sister um and i was you know i was also doing some more exploration aka i was having i was just having sex uh, with other people um <laughs> and i thought the same thing too then we got back together and then i figured okay we're back in love let's now get married and i thought that was gonna fix it but that definitely did not fix the problem instead it's just like great now i'm contract i am contracted to be stuck with you <laughs> there's a contract that says that we're stuck until one of us pays my money to like 
get this fucking shit nulled and void it. Well, can Ooh. I curse? <laughs> God. You can. Okay, it's cool. I, I make sure that I put, like, when I upload yes, the explicit. video and the audio, like, facts. No is that okay for children? Um, yeah, like, it's just such a strange dynamic. And then, like, mm-hmm. You know, we got married so young. You're not a fully formed adult. Your brain is not fully formed at that point. So it's like you're making these these decisions based on society. But really, were you really ready to be married? Absolutely not. I was 20. Man, I don't remember. I think it was either 26 or 28. One of the two. And like think about it now. I'm like, hell no, I'm not ready. Like, even right now, if my boyfriend right now were like would you marry me i'm like are you sure like are you really sure like do you know what it entails like this is not gonna do any this is not gonna change the dynamic of our relationship at all we're just you know we could be who who we are forever still love each other without that piece of paper now if he wants to give me a ring that's a whole different story i will be more than happy to take a diamond ring but (laughs) uh more than happy because i never i didn't get an engagement ring i was the one that proposed to my future ex-husband um so yeah, I wait. Hold up, future ex-husband. Future, because it's you know we're just separated and the divorce is oh, coming coming soon. It's pending. Okay. Yeah, it's pending. So it's a future ex-husband. So I have a boyfriend and a husband right now. <laughs> That's fun to say. All right, Jaja, good boy. Hey. Oh Lord. No. Um. Yeah, no, and divorce is so tough. Like, it's triggering for people, especially if you're one of the people who happens to be a narcissist. Because, you know, it, um, and I feel like even if a person isn't a narcissist, there's a lot of blame to be, you know, doled out. And, um, you know, somebody wants to blame somebody else. I'm not, I'm not saying this is the situation for every divorce. But, you know, some people feel salty or, you know, a certain way because you decided to end things and not continue, you know? Yeah, so that's kind of what's happening. Not happening, that's, things have calmed down a bit, but like once we agree that we were gonna do the separation, everything seemed to be great, you know? Like we were at one point still living together because it was financially, it was hard. You know, both of us, we, we relied on each other for, you know, for so long financially. So I was just trying to figure all that out. Um, and then once I actually left the walls of our relationship, like I left my apartment, I got my own place. Then he became like this, like, I don't want to say he became a crazy person, but like things change. It's like, it's almost like, whoa, I've never seen this, this side of you. But I'm like, it, like, it was almost so poor. I was like, oh, so you never actually had any respect for me. Because the fact that you're disrespecting my boundaries after I've literally set that boundary, I was like, oh, it's over. Here's my apartment. Um, you can't just come over whenever the hell you want. You just can't do that because the truth and the honesty was like, I was out here hoeing, you know, I had to do it. You feel me? Like, nah, bro, you can't just come over. And yeah, we could have still been friends, but even that he kind of disrespected. So like that dynamic changed, the relationship changed like that, you know, it just, it just showed a whole different side of him. And I'm sure, I'm sure I showed him a different side of myself too, you know, like, you know, oh shit, like she has a voice <laughs> or she's a hoe i'm like yes it is what it is bro i mean it's just just the dynamics of divorce now you know what i'm saying like you could be having issues in your marriage all this time right Mm -hmm. but then the minute you decide like hey that's enough i'm good i'd rather not Mm -hmm. um then then you have all these issues and these things that people get triggered People get triggered. Like, I know I have abandonment issues, which I've worked through, you know, um, for a long time. And they stem from my childhood and and certain things trigger you in a certain way. And you don't necessarily know how you're going to react to it until you're put into that situation. Right. You know, um, and I want to say the same thing. Like, yeah, like there was... A, it's it's like when you're getting divorced, you see this side of this person that you thought you knew, but mm-hmm. really you don't know who that person At is. All. And I will be to be completely fair. Like in retrospect, I think of like 
I thinking now, like I definitely was not who I was with him is now who I actually am today. And, but that's a given, right? Like, I feel like we're always going to change. Maybe 10 years from now, I'm not going to be with this person either. But, like, once I once I realized that, like, once I broke out of my shell, essentially, like, while, while I was still married and while we're still together, I was like, oh, shit, the, this person that you thought you knew, it's not like, I'm not that person. Like, I'm sorry that I showed you a whole different, a, dif- a different side or this facade, but I was that was for my own protection. That was just my defense mechanism. Like you said, just abandonment issue. So it's like to feel needed or to feel wanted or to feel safe. I had to like create this persona, but it's not actually who I am. So, um, man, it's funny. Like t- when I talk about it out loud, you're like, oh shit, that's why it didn't work out. And then you start to like that. It didn't work out. It didn't work out. It didn't work out. But um, at the same time, what I have what I have learned about my separation and like leaving such a leaving a long term relationship like that was like I also learned my faults. Like I got to see who I because I now know who I am, and I'm like part of that is also seeing all your your fuck ups and your faults. It's like oh, I was terrible at communicating. I'm still not great with communication or pe- talking about how I feel to with the person. That's still like a work in progress, which. I'm finally going to therapy in my 30s. I never went to therapies in my 20s. That's a weekly baby, weekly therapy yes. session. Yes, healing. <laughs> me? Uh, but I, um, you know, it was, it was, it was all good. I'm just very happy to not be with him in that way. Um, the the relationship there was pretty like much gone. Even the friendship, which is the part that's like sad because, um. And I'm mourning, it's like, I'm, like I'm mourning the, the loss of a friendship because he was a great person and he was a good friend, even though we weren't good as a part, like partners, like a, lo- a lovers, we were not, it was not there, at least definitely not for me. Maybe now, now he sees it differently, of course. Like now I, I feel like after I was decided to leave, it's when he wanted to make the changes. Like, no, bro, because that means that you were aware that there was some fuck up before like the things weren't working and because i finally decided to say deuces this isn't working and i'm I'm out you want to make that change you want to now be this person it's like sorry like maybe you could be that person with somebody else but not with me (laughs) i want to say that 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 touching on that it's kind of like a method of control Mm -hmm. because they're losing control over you that's you know they do things to retain you um the change might not be genuine though because like i remember i used to have these constant conversations and you know we would address the issues right things would change for a couple of days or a week and then all of a sudden back to normal the same things arguing about the same things like all the time and it and it, and it showed a level of um disrespect and then also it's not and i'm not blaming him because like at the end of the day like i know i was a people pleaser i'm still fighting myself with that now like right. saying no when you know i know myself and um and, and being able to be like yeah that's not gonna be for me that's- um i've gotten way better at it of course because i've gone to therapy um uh, i started ther- therapy when i was 32 same age as you See? And, um I've been going consistently once a week, every week. And I've, you know, I've worked on all those issues that I had and like, you know, attachment issues and, 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 and just deciding like, como te digo? Like figuring like you out. Having are. healthy connections with people. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, and not you're, you're having so a trauma cool. bronze. Exactly. And like you're starting that you're starting that healthy connection just with yourself alone because yes. you you were with somebody else. And then in your case, you're a mom. So you had to have that connection with your husband, with your child. So like, what's mm-hmm. the connection between you and yourself, you know? And you, I, that was that was the biggest that. thing, like learning to love myself again and parent myself. Um, that that has been like some of my biggest work. Uh, uh, I went to a couple of, you know, cord cutting ceremonies and i did the you know the red tent with the blue house of brooklyn and we talked about we did this whole series where we're definitely talking about different kinds of wounds right father wound mother wound and let me tell you <laughs> when you get to that point that you're just like this is where i'm i'm at right now like 
emotionally and like mental health wise and there's only one way to go which is up it's 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 a lot of work and it's ugly yeah it's ugly like isn't that literally shadow ugly work, right crying. all that ugly stuff and then you know being able to recognize you know patterns within yourself which is something that that you said you know Mm -hmm. um you know having a healthy uh i feel like i tell people i practice detachment and people are like what do you mean you practice detachment it's just like you know accepting people for who they are and 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 understanding that you can't control what other another person is going to do and like you know having trust in another person Facts. It's to like, the point that you know you're okay with whatever they decide you know right you start you start oh my god I'm st- and i'm still working on that you start like not having expectations of people because we can't expect anyone to do anything i can't expect this person to to feel this way when they may not actually feel that way you know like um i can't take things personal like if they say something to me i can't take that personal that may not be the actual feelings towards me that's just if we are reflection of themselves i remember like the four agreements that's where i think about that um like that's just on them like i can't expect you to do anything because it also like an expectation it's like you're also making some some sort of assumption right so like I'm like, who am I to be out here assuming you? I don't know you 100%. Only you know you, you know? So I'm, but I'm still learning that because I still have a great deal of expectation of, of people and I'm trying to be like disattached from them. Like, nah, 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 hold up, hold on. Yeah, it, it's it's tough, you know? Cause like we're, we're, we, we have expectations placed on us as a, like as women Fact. in society or, you know, anybody really as friends, mm-hmm. as as, as daughters as family members you know uh, mm-hmm. it's kind of like you know that person's expectations of you is not your really your responsibility right exactly it's no, not it's not so you know it's uh, that's only i think i well I, I don't know if i would have ever known that or about me or but no it's fun that's not no I knew these things, right? Like, I read the four agreements a million times with my future ex-husband, mad times, like watch videos, but I never like implemented any of it until we, I left him. Like all, like even therapy itself. Like I've, I've always liked the idea of therapy, believed in therapy. And now is when I do therapy after I left him or whatever. Um, so as a, it's weird. I, the process of like, detaching yourself from a, another person who you've been with and you know because this person that person helped me grow too at the same time like he helped me be this person who i am today a little bit right like he was a creative human so he helped me like oh come on use your creativity take it all out and i'm like okay so he helped me also become who i am today yeah. but that was supposed to be it's part, okay. i feel like those it's all like growing pains in a way like you know I did learn um, a lot from that relationship, what I was was and was not okay with, Mm -hmm. um, how I allow myself to be treated, um, things that are like non-negotiables for me. Um, And I, you know, once I left, I was able to see, you know, and like implement that in future, you know, dating and relationships and things like that. Yes. Which, you know, one thing that I sort of learned, I, I don't think my, my singlehood was very long. I did not mean to get into a relationship at all. I just went really hard at like, oh, I'm single. Like, <laughs> the door's open, boys. <laughs> the door's open. It's open for business. So I never really gave myself too much of a chance to like date, date. And to be fair, I, we were it was all during a pandemic too. So it was kind of hard um to date go out and date and enjoy outside with people uh, someone else um but the one thing that like, my friend also gave me advice on was like you know now that you're single you have to remember like what are the things that you wanted to do when you were in a relationship and what were some of the things that you thought you didn't want um and then so like try to implement that when it comes to dating but the problem with what that, that happens is that we go hard, like, at least for me, I went hard. I just went, I did all the things I've never done before. So then it becomes like, it, it kind of becomes a little toxic because then I'm just letting anything and anybody just like 
show me, do me, it's essentially. Um, was like, he was like, kind of validated. Right, exactly. <laughs> so then you start to like go for these things that are not good for you, yeah. and then you end up getting hurt. But then it's like, like you said, it's like the growing pains of like being single. Like once, once you've learned how to be single, then you're like, oh, okay. Now I do know what I want. I do like these aspects of what I had before, but I also want this. And I definitely don't want that. I'm like, you could keep you and your baby mama all the way over there. I don't want it over here. You lie. How dare you lie to me? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, my God. Like the dating experience now is like, oh, my goodness. I mean, I haven't, you know, dating someone um who's you know a, 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 okay they're meeting they're meeting the the needs that i have right now well before, the report card says that they're meeting expectations yeah they're meeting expectations <laughs> oh well no not not expectations they're like surpassing because I, I have no expectations of this person so they're 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 going above and beyond like because i really don't expect anything from anybody i mean when i started dating and say, like, you better do this, this, this. No, 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 no. It wasn't even that. It was just kind of like, I, okay. So first I became a hermit, right? Mm -hmm. I was like completely traumatized. It was a very rough breakup, you know, going through the divorce itself and then going through like, uh, family court and, and then like, you know, you know, just adjusting to life by myself. Um, I did touch on another and another, the episode I had with Sandy, I talked about how I felt this enormous sense of peace because I didn't have anybody putting demands on me, that, like like things that I had to do because I am the wife or the woman, you know? So just kind of being myself and like, you know, so I, I became a hermit, not, not a hermit, I started going out, like my friends and, you know, I had a lot of support from my best friend Merlin who passed away, rest in peace. Um, and then my friend Diana, I had support from Aiden's godfather, my family, like, you know, I had all the support. So like, you know, at that time I was so depressed. I was actually 275 pounds wow. and I'm only five, three. So that was like the depression eating, literally eating. I was eating away at the depression. I was like, let me get rid of, but, um, yeah, I was like 275. Wow. Um, I hated my job. I was in corporate. I was working at the bank. And um, I got to the point that I had two, two, uh, I was miserable. I had two days a month off. I was taking every, both of the days. Um, yeah. And I was just like, you know, I after I broke up with Aiden's father, like that we that we separated, um, Aiden got diagnosed with autism. So I was able that I had the luxury because not everybody has a luxury. I was able to take three months off of family leave to just see how we adjusted to the early intervention, like the speech therapy and everything. Like he had teachers coming to the house and getting all the services that he needed at the beginning. So, you know, I had those three months to kind of, it's kind of like the pandemic really. Well, the pandemic lasted longer, but I had those three months to kind of like sit down and be like, so you aren't happy. Like, what are you going to do about it? What makes you happy? And that's when I decided to go back to school and um, get my master's in special education. So like, you know, I started like basically like reinventing myself um, I did go out with a couple of people during, like, while I was in my, doing my master's, but it wasn't anything like that. It was kind of more like, let's hang out, whatever. Yeah. Um, and in, in the, during that time, like, the process was just brutal. It was, you know, I was picking oh, the I wrong know. people. I'm I was not attracting. Not, it wasn't even picking so much. It was like I was attracting the wrong people because my frequency was very low. You know, I was still, I was still working through all that, like, trauma right. and all these other things and, and things that I had not worked on for myself. Cause I was still like, I feel like a child when I, when I got in a relationship. So like, you know, working through all those things and, 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 and getting to the point, um, where I'm at today is like, it's like night and day. Like you see a picture of me, like I didn't, I don't look bad. I look 
good. You know what I'm saying? But you can tell in my eyes that I wasn't happy. Mm -hmm. Um, so, you know, it was just, it was, it's been, a, it's been a long process and it is a long and, process. And yeah. then, and then I did, I did have that moment that I was just like, I'm free. Yeah. <laughs> it's like when you leave, when you let, when you let, when you let a dog out of a cage, it's like, like, I'm just going to go there. bananas. I let my kitty cat out her cage and she was out here. <laughs> kitty cat shit. <laughs> I, I feel like I wasn't, it wasn't, it, it wasn't like that, like, like that, like that much, but yeah, I, it, it was, it was just see what was out there. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like I went out with people that I shouldn't have, you know, like, you know, you. I feel like, you know, I know like, you know, I went to you a lot for advice and like, you know, you were definitely like, real, you, you were, you like, oh man, I had like such a good network of women. I was your Yoda. <laughs> <laughs> like, like telling me like nah babe like look you know like not to settle and to like look for what's right for me or whatever and um i definitely did not take that advice for a while and even with the person who i am with was like that was like very bumpy start to very bumpy uh which we just kind of op not over overlooked that we overcame that talked about it everything is good now it's co still working on things but you know that's just the beauty of i am can't believe i'm in a relationship can't believe we live together this is the wild but um i did man i did one i did ask the uniform the you know the universe for uh, this person or you know and then the universe was like oh hi right, bitch no problem you won here you go manifesting manifested and i got what i wanted i always get what i want oh man <laughs> <laughs> Wait, can you tell me one of your most? I mean, you told me that you're like dating during the pandemic, but like yeah, okay. one of your most memorable dates. It could be positive or negative, and it could it doesn't have to be like post divorce. It could be like before, like something oh. that stands out in your mind. Um, well, I did think I had. To, I thought I was thinking about like what was like good, what was bad. I mean, like I said, I was dating. Um, AKA scrolling around a lot during pandemic, which was very crazy because we were like, it was a whole ass pandemic, like, you know, and I'm over here like, oh, hey, exposure, how you doing? Uh, <laughs> um, no. Um, so yeah, it was hard for me to date. Again, it was hard for me to date because there was nowhere to go. So a lot of times it was just me meeting up with people uh, at their home. So, uh, which again, I'm a very, very, very sexual human person. I fucking love sex. I you know i'm like if, if the vibe is there it will happen it will happen if the vibe is there and you're doing and saying the right things it will happen oh my gosh the one time the one time i actually went on a date let me just tell you this little quick story i bet that listen 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 so i've gone on a date and i was it was you know, I was talking to so many people you know swiping swiping and you know i feel like obviously it's easier for women I think, um, to like talk to anybody. Cause like men are just swiping right, left and right. Me, I'm like left, 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 oh, right, left, 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 oh, maybe right. And this one kid, kid, I will say kid cause he was way younger than me. Um, and he came and I was like, ah, fuck it. I'll talk to him. He seems like, he seemed like a nice person. Even text, he was a nice person. He was like super spiritual kind of dude, you know, like a brujo, if you will. I'm into astrology, all of that stuff, you know, all that jazz. Um, and he looked okay. Like I didn't, what, when I saw his picture, I'm like, he's not ugly, but like, you know, based on his personality, I get his, his look. Right. And I'm very much, I am, I'm, I'm sorry. I am into looks and how a person dresses, what they're wearing, what sneakers they do have or don't have. Um, I am very much into it. I don't care. That is, but whatever. I gave him the benefit of the doubt. So also you can't tell height when you're on a dating app. So whatever, we decided to meet up at a oh park because again, nothing was open. So we, and it was like spring, summertime. So we went to the park, I forget which park. Um, and we met up and I remember where we, we, we I told him where we should meet in the corner somewhere. And I remember as I'm approaching, I'm like, oh no, is that him? From afar, I was like already like, I was like, wait, why? What, what, what was he looked that? like a fucking bug. His hair was wild. Like, like he like, it's like he took his hair and blew it out and was just like, have like, and it was just crazy. And just wasn't attractive on him. He was just not cute. Like, I just thought he was very ugly and he was just about my height. And you already know, I'm sure I'm five feet tall. Homeboy had to be at least five, two. I don't know. 
He was oh not sure. God. He looked like he could be my little brother. Um, so I'm like, oh, hey, and of course, immediately, I'm, I'm a nice person, so I'm not gonna, I could have just simply, like, do, like, ghosted him right there and left him hanging, but I didn't do that. Then we go, we walk to the park, and I don't even remember our conversation. He's just telling me about himself, I guess, and I'm like, yeah, yeah, sure, sure, and I'm like, already at this point, I'm like, I can't wait for this to be over. It was hot. I do remember it was hot. And I'm like, oh, God. I'm like, oh, God, what am I going to do? Fuck it. I'm going to the park. And we sit down at a bench. He starts talking about, like, some books that he's reading about Egypt and the pyramids and da di da di da da And he busts out this plate of food, Dominican food. He's like, oh, my mom bought me un plato, like, uh, 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 you know. Un... Wait, ho, ho. Where did he cut? Where where'd the food come from? He had food already with him, like, because, you know, we were going to do a park. So I'm thinking, cool. Oh, okay, wait, it was like a picnic. Yeah, it was essentially supposed to be a picnic, right? And I wasn't okay. expecting any food. I was just going to buy some fruits and water, like, something like that, just to chill, because we were going to walk wait, wait, around. Wait, wait, what park did you guys go to? I'm sorry, I'm um, interrupting. Not Fort Tyron. It's another fort up in the high, up park. in, like, uptown. Oh. All right, whatever. One of these parks up there, yeah, like, up the hill by the park. church. Gorgeous part, beautiful part. We went to it. Okay. We sat down. Like by the cloisters and stuff. Probably. There's a lot of flowers and stuff. Yes. 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 Okay. Gotcha. Cool. Like All you right. have the, view, the Henry Hudson Parkway or River, you know that yep. area. Yeah. Got it. We went there. Gorgeous. Beautiful. I want to go back. And we sit down and like he immediately thinks that like and that's the thing because I don't like to make people feel bad. So like when I'm people mistake my niceness for flirting or like i want to be with you and that's just false i'm just a nice person I'm um not- that is that aries energy i'm gonna interject right there so, man. you guys are natural flirts so yeah. you thing, guys right? are nice and people fall in love with you and you guys are like ew not you I'm like, stop it i'm like i don't even like i'm just being nice get away from me and like yeah so that was literally what happened he like sits next to me and he does one of these like he like puts his arm around me and i'm like oh <sighs> i'm like and I like back up and like he busts out un plato, like one plate. It's just like uh, a serving, one serving like rice, beans, and a type of carne, whatever, and some platanos. And that was what he brought as far as like for us to share, which I was okay with, to be honest with you, because um, because I wasn't hungry. I just wanted to snack. And we go, we sit, and then we go sit on the grass. And he's he busts out this book talking about Venus and like us, the women, the Venus. And he looks at me, he's like, I think I found my Venus. I'm like, Oh, I'm your Venus. Who is your Venus? Me, I ain't oh your Venus. Oh my god! He said I'm his Venus, and then he sits super close to me. Now, my wait, how so many crazy. times did you get? Wait, wait, how long did you guys talk before you went on the first date? Oh, uh, maybe a few days. He's and like I said, and he was a thing. What it was that I think I was at a moment where I was very low and sad, and he was like lifting up my spirits because he's a spiritual man. And he's like, you know. Uh-huh. Thank God, manifest this, da 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 So that's probably what attracted me to him, like, just his positivity. Um, however, his positivity, he's just being a fucking creep. And on top of that, he's, like, telling me about his music, and he's, like, sh- like he's, like, put on the music, like, oh, I listen to this, and he's, like, some music, and then he put on his, like, rap song, I don't know. And then we're just sitting there at the grass, and he gets really close to me, and then at that oh my point, God. he's, like, I was like, hey, bro, it's kind of hot. I don't need you that close to me right now. This is I only got one tiny blanket. Just because this blanket is small doesn't mean you got to be all up on me. I literally said that. I was like, it's really hot. So back up. So he backed up. But he was like, oh I think I found my Venus. I'm like, yeah, I don't know about all oh that. And we started talking about that. I was just having conversation. And again, not to be rude. And I'm like, he's like, and it was like, you know, when someone sends you a text where you're like, because I'm like, I'm like really, really bad with texting. Like if you, I cannot catch up via text message. We'll send voice messages. I can talk to you. I'll catch up that way. Mm-hmm. But the same way, but when we're in person, I can, you know, I can definitely have, have a, a conversation. conversation. Yeah. But the same way that I am via text messages is how I was with him. He will say something. I was like, oh, okay. Like, nah, it's whatever. I like this. Oh, you know, I got this two years ago, like tattoos, whatever. He said, okay. Then we leave and... I think when he left, like when we we were walking so that I can get to my Uber or whatever, and he's like, I, I, I man, I wish I could remember, but essentially the gist of it was that like, mind you, that his the food that he got was like a five dollar service. Because I remember saying, Oh, like you didn't have to buy food. Like I was totally fine with just eating a couple of fruits and this water, blah, blah, blah. He was like, Oh, no, it's okay. I got you some food and I got you a bottle of water, his bottle and mine bottle. 
But when we went to the deli, I guess he must have already picked up on the fact, oh, because he asked me on another date. I was like, I'll let you know. I'm not really sure, you know, like I'm very busy. And, you know, he was telling me about like his work. And I'm like, well, I work this. And, you know, I like purposely was trying to tell him like, I got money, bro. I don't, know, I don't need you. Like, I'm like, I'm sorry, broke nigga. Oh, like, my God. I'm, I'm good. That ass. But I didn't tell him that in that way. I was just like, kind of like. I was like, no, it's okay. Like, you know, you're kind of young. I was like, you're kind of young. You're not really there for me and whatever. And then we were at the deli and he's like, hey, you think you can give me half for the food? But wait, I thought he said his mom packed the food. No, no, no. His mom gave him more. Like his mom was the one that told him about getting the food and he got that. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah he got that. I, I thought, I, wait, yo pensaba que él, I thought he had like, brought food from his house that's what no I no no he bought like a serving like a whole like that he bought oh, from, he like, bought a, he bought yeah yeah, yeah he it. bought but like mind you he bought the food for us right like that was his con contribution for the date because and again you know obviously he didn't take me out to a restaurant because everything was closed but mm -hmm. um that was his contribution was bringing us a food one plate to share together Instead of mm -hmm. bringing my own plate, he brought his own plate. Like, he brought one thing. Like, okay. I'm going to split that. And that was already, like, a red flag for me. Like, even though I wasn't hungry, the fact that you wanted us to share, like, uh, uh, food, like, and we don't know each other like that, like, that's weird to me. Like, I don't know you. I don't know your germs. Yeah. So I, whatever. So when we were at the deli, and I'm like, I, was, I wanted to get water or something like that. He was, we were at the, at the deli, and he's like, Hey, you think you can get me for half of the food? I'm like, what food? He's like, oh, this food, it costs $10. So, like, your half is $5. I was like, uh, and I had cash. He's like, because he wanted cash. I'm like, I was like, um, I can vent with you that. I'm like, I don't have cash on me. He's like, oh, uh, I was like, I really was hoping for cash. I'm like, well, I don't got cash for you, bro. So, I don't want to tell you. And I was like, you, I'm like, you want this piece of gum? I could buy you this gum if you like. I'm like, and like, like, like a child, like you want some gum, you want some, you want some chocolates, and then, oh my gosh. and then he was like, nah, you know, it's just I don't have any money. I was like, oh, I'm sorry to hear that. That's terrible. And then, uh, meanwhile, I'm like, my lift is on its way, and it's like a mercy. It happened. It just happened to be a Benz. Just how, of course, he was like, oh, oh, you got a Benz. And then I was like, I'm like, what can I say? I'm like, <laughs> I'm a business. They're like, you know, that's how, it's how I roll. Anyways. He asked me again out on a date, and I told him straight up. I was like, bro, sorry, no can do. I'm not really interested in you. Mr. Spiritual Man was like, well, if we can have a friendship with you, are you interested in a sexual friendship? I said, absolutely not. Oh, my gosh. It was terrible. And I, I was, it was just bad because I immediately I was so unattractive by him. I was very unattractive by his, like, fake wokeness his fake spirituality i'm sure he was very spiritual but like he was just using it in a way to like to like you feel me like uh like get me like i didn't like it i feel like i was being taken advantage of and then the fact that this motherfucker's asking me for five dollars like you broke ass motherfucker like really nah i'm good on that bro and then to then ask me like if we're not gonna be friends in that way do you want to be a sexual friend i'm like no thank oh you oh my gosh no thank you and that wasn't you know like it's not that bad but like I'm sure there's worse. I have way worse stories than that. They're oh just very God. bad. But that was like the most. And I remember he still hit me up one time. This is what, once I started going back. Not once I started dating my now boyfriend. I remember he hit me up and I had deleted his number. He's like, I'm like, he's like, hey, how are you? I'm like, who is this? Who this? I said, who this? Question mark. He sends me a picture of him. I And at the time I had my re-receipts turned on. So I left them on red oh and I blocked him. Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> this is like very triggering because like when i was uh when i first uh when i first started like getting on the dating apps you know um you know you kind of you're trying to like feel out things and like, yeah you guys would propose like coffee dates or park dates and Ugh. Like, at first I went, and then I was just like, you know, this is kind of dangerous also, because, like, it's very park, dangerous. they could just chop you up and throw you in the woods. I'd be like, dead I ass. wasn't, no, I, I mean, obviously dead I, dead I wasn't dating guys me. that I thought were serial killers, but it, it's just kind of like, you know, I'm just like. Oh, no, I understand. I have, I straight up be asked, well, I used to ask men, like, um, are you going to kill me? Are you a murderer? 
I'm like, cause we're not, I'm obviously they'll laugh, but I'm like, that's not funny. That's like an honest question. One dude I met up with, and it was strictly for sex though, still, I met up with him and I was, I told him shit up like, you have crazy eyes and I don't like it. I still ended up banging oh him gosh, only so that I can get mine. And then, oh then I, he didn't get his and he's like, oh, we're done. I'm like, yeah, I already got mine. I'm good. He's like, he's like, I guess, you know, as long as you got yours, it's all good. Da, da, da. And then he wants to go back and tell me like, oh, you know, it was, it was Trey. Like, but I was, he was talking about like me giving him head. And he's like, you know, uh, you know, it was good. It was good. It was good. I was trying to be mad dismissive of it. And then when I'm leaving, I'm like driving away. He hits me up. He's like, yo, can you come back? I'll give you head. I'll do this. I'm like, I'm good, bro. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Oh my gosh. The nerve. Oh God. I have so many. So Um, wait, it's so I started developing a system of like red flags so that so I could like sort through the profiles because like I didn't want to like discount somebody that might be potentially good because I was just like, hmm, I don't know. Right, yeah, of course. But um so yeah, my system was like, um, if they don't have any pictures outside of the country, because like, I like to travel. So like right. I'm looking for somebody that's kind of like on the same wavelength yeah yeah on the same wavelength that like the same similar things so like if i see um strictly selfies red flag um the other thing is only pictures on the block in new york city like in this oh, in their like, like neighborhood seeming thing red flag um you know the picture i hate dude no traveling pic- pictures hmm. another red flag um, what, what, what were one. you gonna say? I hate the ones where they take the picture in front of the hive, the new hive, that fucking hive over there, over by uh, oh, the Hudson Yards, yeah, yeah, yeah. I hate that picture. Like, when I used to see them, I'm like, Ugh. yeah, you're a fucking tourist. <laughs> um, and and <laughs> wait, and then uh, oh, and then and then always like, uh, the, the, I feel like those were like the biggest red flags. Oh, and then when I started talking to them, it's like, obviously, if they are like. A few minutes, a few messages in. Can I have your number? No, I don't know you. Right. Like, can I we have it. a conversation on here first? There's a reason why there's like wow. back and forth messaging, you know. Um. So, like, ask me for my number. The, I, I actually had that on my profile, and that's how I tested if they were reading. I would be like, um, if you ask me for my messages in the first few, um, if you ask for my number in the first few messages, just don't. Forget it, right? Exactly. And then the ones that did, I'd be like, yeah, it seems like you didn't read my profile. Um, you want to know one of my red flags? It's, it's kind of shallow, I think. But what? if I, oh, no. if, if when we did exchange phone numbers and that bubble was not blue, we had a problem. <laughs> we have a problem. And that's the thing. I know. And like, listen. But we just now. wait. Would you would you stop talking to somebody because oh. they have an Android? but would it bother you yeah i was like red well the thing is i'm also aware that like the green bubble could have been a fake number like you probably oh. why you got a fake at like you feel me that's why because if it's a blue num- blue bubble i'm like oh hi right, cool, cool cool you texting me from your phone that's your maybe your actual phone number if it's a green bubble I'm like why is your bubble green you got an android not that i have anything against androids kind of do but still um i'm in technology never prefer it no. <laughs> um but Maybe it is a little classes, but uh, but the thing was that like, why is your bubble green? Like, why you don't have a blue bubble? And then they'll say, oh, it's because I have an Android. I'm like, okay, fine. I'll still talk to you as long as you're like a decent human. And then other times it's like, they'll come up with some wallet too. So I'm like, oh, you're just giving me a fake number because who knows, you probably got like five different baby mamas and you're still fucking them or something. Or you have a whole ass oh wife. Oh my gosh. And so, or sometimes they still have a blue bubble and still have a fucking wife. And they tell, don't tell you until you find out some other way. OMG. Yeah. Um, oh, God, dating is the worst. Oh, my God. Oh, 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 wait. Yeah, I think that was pretty much, those were pretty much my red flags. And then, like, you know, I would, like, assess them through the text, the conversations. And then, oh, and then, it, oh, and then another, another thing, did you ever experience this? Like, they wanted to be, like, pen pals. Like, oh, you would keep texting yeah. and texting and texting and there was never an attempt to to actually go out and meet you. Facts. I've had someone like almost say like they needed to have to talk to somebody, and I essentially told them you need therapy. 
I'm not here to be a therapist, so I'm sorry. Like, like I don't I mean maybe that's mean, but like I'm in no position to just hear your problems when I clearly have my own problems. And sorry, I just don't have that time, but I do have the time to have sex if you want. <laughs> oh. oh my gosh. Um Yeah, and then like when you go on the date, if they go if they go in like right away for like a hug oh uh, i don't know like it dep- it depends like on the vibe. conversations and the vibe mm-hmm. um that or or like too familiar right away mm. i went on a date with a guy and uh, he, was, he was just i don't know like it was something it was like something off about him like the minute i met him i was like yeah. And then I was like, and then I was like, Ooh, I gotta go. Yeah. I was like, I got the babysitter canceled. I gotta go. I was like, oh, no. Oh, and sweet. he was like, oh, wait. And then, and then, I, like, I took the train home because I was downtown. And the guy's like, oh, let me ride the train with you. And I was like, oh, I, I, w- so he's riding I the train with me. And then he's doing like the arm thing, like trying to mm-hmm. like hold me. And I was like, mm, don't touch me. I was like, I'm mm-hmm. not there yet. We're not there yet. You're not like, my boyfriend. I was like, not even that. Like, I was like, we might not ever get there because I'm just like, ooh. We're the then, first day, bro. Stop it. And then he's like sitting like right next to me on the train and like trying to go in and like snuggle. I was like, oh, no. I don't know you. And then he's like, asked me, he's like, am I making you uncomfortable? I'm like, yes. I was like, couldn't you tell? I'm actually asking you to stop. You know what I'm saying? So he ended up getting off the train, but it was just wild. Wow. Wild. I don't understand that, which is so funny to me that the dudes who you are obviously giving them vibes or the people who you're obviously giving them vibes that you're not interested in any way or like even in a physical way are the most like, I'm going to go in for a hug. It's like, no, don't do that. Because what will happen is that you don't even know me and you might get punched in your balls by me. So get the fuck away from me and I'm being nice. So, oh God. It's always the ones that you don't want that want you the most. Um. Wait, there was, wait, I was telling, I was telling, actually telling this to my friend the other day, um, Mari, I was telling her about this date that I went on with this guy and, um, you know, you go on the first date, you give him the benefit of the doubt, the guy's breath was kind of like, yuck, yeah, like, yuck, yuck, <sighs> I'm like, you don't he took me a, we went to a beautiful restaurant. And that everything was, was nice, but then when he went in closer, I was just like, mm, "Ooh, ooh!" And me being nice, I'm like, you know, he probably just came back from work. Hell, Maybe he was just... just like, you know, hot breath. And then like he went in for the kiss because the the the, 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 the it it wasn't that I was like completely turned off by him, right? I was just like, maybe it's just you know whatever. But then like, he kissed me and he like licked around my mouth. Oh. Then I was like, what did I, uh, like the smell was like, like I could smell Ew, it. Yes. <gasps> oh, oh it's, it's like on your upper lip, and you just have the nose is right there. That's gross. <gasps> I know what you mean. Oh my gosh. Oh, that's no, good. Then, so then, so then, so then. <laughs> wow. And I'm on the second day with him. Otra vez. Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, mm. breath? Nah. I was like, yeah, this is a no from me, dog. Like, you know, and then like he ended up, he was like one of these guys. He's like, "Oh, let's be friends, whatever." Um, but he was like very salty. Like he would like like be watching like my Instagram stories. It was really creepy. So I eventually, like I kind of like blocked him and just, oh, as you should um, well, block the hot ass breath because I'm I always look at teeth. Teeth is such a big thing for me. Like, if your teeth are not, and like, his teeth didn't look bad. I just feel oh, like maybe no. he suffers from like halitosis or something. That, or maybe he's just one of those people that only does the crust white strips, but doesn't like oh doesn't God. have like a proper dental. I know people like that. That they don't have like proper like dental hygiene like skills, but they'll do the crust white strips, but they don't floss at night or like they don't even br- at least brush your teeth more than once in the day. Like, bro, like. So you look at teeth. I look at teeth too. Yes. Like hands. Oh my like god! If they have, if they have like, have you ever seen the guys like that? Like eat their nails and they have. Ew, like the yeah, nugs? that's not. 
that's gross. That's not that's don't gross. Touch me. Nah, so because your fingers are gonna go in my vagina most likely, and I don't want those nasty fingers Ugh. in my vagina. I that also, and, or like, like a lot of, like unless you like work as like a landscaper, yeah, or like a mechanic. But like, if you're going on a date, you would think that you want to look your best. So I'm guessing, like, wash under your nails. Yeah, totally. It's just like, you know, it's no, I get it. Like sometimes, like, like I like to like do like I like to do nails. So like, I understand like. Sometimes your hands might not be like as long as your hands. Sometimes they might be dry. You do work in construction, so that they, they look hard or whatever. But it is true, like when it's like those people who like almost have no nail because like they're like biting it or like you know whatever. They I'm have like, a lot of cuticles, like picked. Yes, and what's going on with your hands, bro? What's going on there? Like you know. With, you, so yeah, teeth, hands, mm-hmm. and then just kind of like an overall scan yeah, like, of how they look. Attire is um, a big one for me. I. I do like a person who like not that they're not not just like a good dresser, but like it knows about fashion, knows like 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 they just like know like they just know about fashion. Like I also feel like there's some dudes that try a little too hard. It's like bro, like you cool, you look yeah, you look nice, but like you're, I don't know. I kind of like a little hoodish in there. So let me get some urban wear up and deal. You know, um, like a dude that wants to mix that that goes to a thrift store too. Like yeah. yeah. Uh, I I feel like that's not really my style. I mean, I do, you know, I, I own like Jordans like that I bought after because yeah, yeah, yeah. I couldn't afford them when I was a kid. Mm-hmm. Um, I do so, wear Jordans too. once in a while, but when I go on a date, like I want you to look presentable because yeah. I'm going to bring my A game. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm, I'm dressing up. I'm going to do, you know, full face beat, not like makeup to like to look like not like myself. Right, you know, full face be nice outfit, you nice shoes. Makeup. You better look nice. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, come on, you got to do an effort. Like, there was this one guy. He came, and not that I was judging him, but like that was like one of the reasons that I was just kind of like maybe not. Um, he came and he like he, sh- he was like all the way through how. Do you like, his his shirt looked like he just like yeah, I know what you maybe mean. from a hamper and just kind of like threw it on with some jeans and some shoes and I was like it's like the bug guy that I went on a date the park the bug that's what I'm gonna call him the bug he just he looked like he like no no he looked like he came from the gym like yeah and even that like some people look good when they come out of the gym aka yeah my... <laughs> um I don't like eso eh... Oh, they have to smell good. I was gonna ask you a question. I totally forgot what it was. It was about dating. What? Oh, freak. Oh, oh. Damn. oh, got it. Do you? Okay, I've had this conversation with my friend all the time. Do you go to a first date? Mind you, I ha- I haven't actually. Like I said, I didn't ever really went on a date date. So like this experience never really happened for me. But do mm-hmm. you go to a date expecting to for them to pay, or do you expect for you to go fifty fifty? Or do you like do? Is it does it depend on like if the if the date is going well, you expect them to pay? Like you know, how do you like how do you go okay. about like the go expectation go? is not there. I always walk around with my own money. But facts, 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 facts. I do warn the guy that if I go in and I pay either the entire bill or half of it, you're not seeing me again. Hmm. Not because of anything. It's just kind of like in my mind at the time when I was, you know, dating other people, it was kind of like, you know, okay, so I'm just going to be real right now. So I am a, a woman that is like, you know, I'm very outgoing and I take over and I have a very strong personality, right? So when I go out with someone, I want to be able to be vulnerable mm-hmm. and be feminine because I have a lot of like masculine energy in the sense that I'm just like, all right, mm-hmm. let's do this. Let's let's take care of this. Let's do this. And we're going to do this and we're going to execute, execute the plan. And these are the steps we're going to take to take care of it and whatever. When I go on a date, I want to be able to relax, number one, because I'm a mom and I am a professional. And like I said, I am doing all these things all the time. I want to be able to just relax. You know what I'm saying? So I go on a date. I kind of want to be treated well. And I want to be, you know, I want to be able to be a girl, right? Right. 
So the expectation is not there. Like, I don't expect anybody to do anything for me. But if you do, that is a good indication that I feel comfortable being feminine. Not that I'm trying to chop you out, because at the end of the day, like, I could pay for the bill. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but, um, yeah, like, if I go in to pay for the check. I don't tell them that. Like, I wouldn't, like, if it was me. No, I'm real, because, like, let me tell you, I've been on some messed up dates, man. There's been guys that are like, oh, we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. What is that even? Just going out, making plans, securing a sitter, and we're going to figure it out? Nah, bro. We're not going anywhere. Uh, I'd rather just go out with my friends. Goodbye. Uh, We're going out for coffee? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Like, if I'm a, a coffee person, that's cool. But, you know, I, I don't know. Or, oh, man. I, uh, like, I will say that I think that I will always go in knowing that I will pay 50-50, right? But what will determine, well, it's too late now, but what will determine if the person is going to, I'm going to go on another date, is if they would, if they take the initiative to be like, I'm going to pay for the bill. Then I'll be like, hi, hi, cool, cool, cool. I like you, I like you. Now, yeah, like, there has to be like a little bit of a struggle there. Like, if you go in and then the guy's like, oh, no, I got it, I got it. That, mm -hmm. that I feel like that's a... A good indicator that the person wants to see you again like i don't know i don't know i, I feel yeah. like i i know nothing but like yeah we know, i don't know, we know. I but know. i like to be i like to be treated well and, and you know i know you want to be girly and do these nice things no i agree and, though that's the thing i do uh, i agree too like i my i i always justify like a, someone paying on my for my date it's like listen i am a woman i'm a tina which means i'm definitely not getting paid as much as anybody up in this bitch. okay I have expensive makeup on. I have nice clothes on. So, like, it's, you know, like, the fact that you had to step away to be with me, you should pay for such <laughs> You should pay. You feel me? But, oh, my gosh. You know, I'm, I'm glad. I'm, ooh, I'm glad that's not the case anymore. <laughs> yeah, dating is hard. Um, I don't know. And then, like, um. I remember there was this one guy that he was like talking to me and we, we didn't go on a date yet. And then he was just like, uh, okay, so this is when I step in. Like if I see that the, per the place they're suggesting is like not uh, a good look, he was like, oh, let's go to Applebee's on our first date. And I was like, oh, you wouldn't go on Applebee Applebee first date? <laughs> I don't Girl, know. I don't eat at Applebee's on the regular. I don't either. First that of all, I, I mean, there's, yes. there's corporate restaurants that are not like, I don't know, like you spend just as much as a nice restaurant, but That's the service is, is most of the time terrible. And yeah. the food is not that great. So it's like you're spending the same thing you would spend like at a boutique restaurant, but you're getting poor quality ingredients and in food. Uh, no, I, I get it. No, I mean... If someone were like, let's go to Applebee's, it's like, why? There's nothing else around? Like, do you live in a small town where, like, Applebee's is a place to go? Because if that's the case, cool, no problem. If but we live in New this, York. Yeah, but it, right, it's like New York City. Like, bro, like, let's go at least. I'll, I'm down with having soup dumplings somewhere in fucking Chinatown where, like, a soup dumpling costs, like, $2.50. I'm like, yeah, hell fucking yes. But I do remember having this conversation, like, would I be okay, like, if I, we went to a taco truck on the first date? I totally would, though. Like, I... Only because I never expect a first date or I would never, I would never care if a first date is at a, like a nice restaurant or we're going to the taco truck because I'm assuming that the taco truck is a good taco truck and that's why we're going there. You know, like, oh, I've heard this taco uh, truck is the best. Then I'm, I'm cool with, I am cool with that. Like, I don't okay, know. Okay, 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 okay. Taco truck is cool if you're doing other activities that is yeah. not just food at a taco truck. Yeah, like maybe we could go to a dive bar afterwards, and then I'm like, all right, cool. So yeah, I went. I went on a date that we went to a show, and um, it was like in Brooklyn. We went to the show. We had food from the taco truck, and then we had like another thing that we had to do. Yeah. So yeah, that's perfectly fine on a like on a first date. Yeah. But, um, I don't know. Yeah, I'm, I don't I'm, know. I just like it, it, like I went through. Payments. I'm super low maintenance. I'm very like like it doesn't take much to impress me as long as like 
that impression, like as long as again, if that's a, like, oh, I heard this taco truck has like the best BDIs or like the best chorizo taco or whatever, or like, oh, you know, I'm like, oh, we're no, like, cool, let's check it. I'm like, you know, I'm like, I wouldn't say I'm a foodie, but I, I do like hole in the walls kind of spots because I like to like just go to that spot. I'll keep going and going, but I'm not. I'm super. I'm very. I'm, I'm just talking about. It. I'm super low maintenance. Very low maintenance. <laughs> very low. Doesn't take much to impress Penny. Apparently, doesn't take much. All right. Much uh, so, much. the final topic for today is going to be: What advice would you give single people? Oh, um, I would say honestly, and I feel like I, I do wish I had a little bit more time to do this for myself. Or had what wait, wait, newly single people, newly single people, really? like like fresh out of like either a long-term relationship or marriage or you know, date that. yourself first date yourself first explore the things that you didn't have in that relationship but don't like don't push yourself over the edge like don't like you know like if you never did skydiving and the person that you're dating wants to do skydiving but you know you don't want to do skydiving though you, that was the thing you never did so it doesn't mean that you have to do the thing that you didn't do before you know like I wasn't dating drug dealers, but I ended up wanting to be with a bunch of drug dealers. That wasn't necessarily a good thing. So, <laughs> you know, but I'm saying like, but still explore the things that you were intrigued by before and never yeah. got a chance to do. And then, you know, and also like dating yourself like that ass, like date yourself, take yourself out on a date. Yes. Like literally treat yourself like you will treat, you know, go date you, date you just for a little bit. You know, it doesn't have to be for long. Even if it's like for 30 days, I'm going to just date me and not go on any yes. date anybody. Date yourself. I think that's super important. Just like dating yourself. Cause then you, then you know what it is that you want, like yeah. what you want without settling for some, something whack. Um, what I would say is like, like kind of, you know, take a uh, work on yourself, like mm -hmm. be by yourself first and dude. Yes. I agree with you. Like completely date yourself. Like, Give yourself time between one relationship and another. That's another thing. I've seen a lot of people like relationship hop and, and I don't know, man. And then the, they keep running into the same person just yeah. in a different body. You know what I'm saying? Because they yes. haven't healed or done the work or seen what it is that they're attracting. So they right. kind of like re keep re 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 rehashing the same cycle. So definitely exactly. like take time for yourself. You know, I'm not telling you take five years off. Don't be a hermit and go live in the mountains. Just kind of like take time for yourself. Take yourself out on dates. Like, yes. would you date you? Honestly, like, mm -hmm. you know, there's people with a lot of requirements, but would you date you? Like, I'm lovely. I, I take myself out all the time. Listen, okay. but, you know, there's people that, you know, you, they have to, especially newly single people, would you date yourself right now? And, 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 and be honest, you know, it's, and sometimes it hurts and that's okay though. That's part of the human experience. We need to sure you know, work on yes. our stuff. Back. So comadres, thank you for joining us today on their little exciting topic. And thank you, Penny, for coming on. Um, Thanks for having me. Guys, you know, you can follow me at Comadre on the pod on Instagram and you can follow Penny at... Uh, hold on, let me, hold on, let me, see. let me give you my, my Labian Nights handle. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Labian Nights, that's L-A-B-I-N-N-I-G-T-S. Same thing at, at Labian Nights on Instagram. And that's it. Okay. So I'm, and I Comadre... I a couple you... episodes, so yeah, that's it. <laughs> yeah, like catch her, catch her podcast. It's more of a <laughs> it's X rated. Yeah, I want to yeah, hear nastiness. Uh, you come to <laughs> late being night, so it is explicit. Uh, Very. This was guys, tame, you know, tame for you. <laughs> <laughs> for the sake of your show, I was a lot more tame than I normally am on a regular basis. <laughs> guys you know if you have any questions please feel free to send me a comadre gram uh in my email at comadreando at escthenetwork.com and dm me if you guys have episode suggestions you want to hear more if you want me to bring back penny for more uh comadre time let me know um and thank you for spending time with your comadres have a good night everyone bye bye